Hello, Peter Geary here outside the Vivid Gallery. It's Thursday. We do our Thursday threes with Jeff Kiefer. Why don't we go in? It's a beautiful day. Look what's going on in the gallery today. Now, today I wanted to talk a little bit about how these pictures come to be. Take, for example, this picture right in front of us. A lot of people that visit here, I say, well, do you know what you're looking at? And what I mean by that is if you go very closely, you'll see this is canvas, like just like what you would paint on. So it's a, it's a photograph that's been manipulated and then plotted onto canvas and mounted and framed. And they're fairly uh, reasonably priced um, and you can take away a little bit of Hilton Head with you. But the question is, how does Jeff make these incredible pictures? Well, let's go find out. Good morning, Peter. Welcome back to Vivid Gallery. Good morning, Jeff. So I just was telling the viewers that these are beautiful pictures, but nobody knows how they're made. Can you take us through a little bit of that for our Thursday three today? Sure, I'd be glad to do that. And uh, uh, what we'll do is cover a little bit about the actual taking of the photo, how we compose and that sort of thing. And then probably most importantly about the post-processing and printing part of it. And the three there, are take the picture, edit it, and print it. They always say it's a little bit of science and a little bit of art. Uh, I would say yes, uh, you gotta <laughs> use both. Because at the end of the day, it's your eye that will determine whether or not you like it. All right, take me, All right. take me let's, on a trip. Let's go ahead and come on in here. And one of the things I've been working on is to increase the number of photos of beach scenes. And, uh, uh, that's a lot of fun. That's a beautiful line. And uh, the best times I find to take beach scenes are early in the morning or late in the day. The coloring is beautiful based on uh, based on uh, the sun's sunrise and sunset. All right. And well, so what do we have on your computer here? Well, this is an example. We're going to use this one this, today of a photo, and it's it's a before and after view. So and that's the before. That's the before and that's the after. Okay. If I could find the cursor, I would slide it, but I... So it looks like it. you just lit them up some. Is that all it is? No. <laughs> no you got the specific processes to adjust for exposure first. And there's a variety of ways to do that with your, your, uh, your brights, your mediums, your shadow, blacks and whites. Right. Then you have to adjust for color. After you get the color done, then you balance it. And then you add whatever special kind of areas you want to emphasize in color or contrast or lighting. So what th this picture I'm looking at is the final thing. What, when was that taken? Like in what time of the day? Actually last week. No, but like what time of day? That was uh, right after sunrise. The sun was very low on the horizon and right over my shoulder and back of me. Because this looks like, you know, this is if I was like looking for a perfect picture, that's what this would look like. But I see you've laid out for me here what the original picture looked like. Yeah, this is the original out of camera. This wow. is the raw. That is, his, I mean, they're not even anything close to each other. No, and that's what's a little different about taking a picture with an iPhone versus a, a, a medium format camera like I'm using. So before, this may be a little bit of an extreme example, but in the case and, of sunrise and, and sunsets, you get such a difference between your shadows and your brights that you need to protect your bright areas, the highlight areas, because otherwise they get what they call blown out. And it's much easier to recover in the shadows. Yeah, as an amateur photographer, I'm always trying to make it very bright. And what you're telling me now, actually, you want it dark that you can bring out the color and bring out the lights versus being blown out where you can't retrieve anything. Is that what you're that saying? That is absolutely correct. That's what you go for. So you go for the dark like this, and then you can get this. And interestingly, you, your eyes will, through the viewfinder back of the screen, they are not particularly reliable in terms of the exposure you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. So yes, I use that, but what I primarily depend upon are my graphics, my light meter and my histograms that allow me to understand what is the exposure and color balance of the photo I'm about to take and make any adjustments before I take it so that I have some confidence that I can put it together, recover it and post to this to this, uh, this form. So when I come through the gallery, there are lots of pictures I recognize. I'm like, oh yeah, I, I've seen that one before. But you seem to always be putting up new stuff. 
Uh, are you taking pictures daily, weekly, monthly, yearly? I basically shoot every day if I can. Come on. If I have the time, yeah. I shoot my evening time or my early morning time. Uh, I don't have other things to do and I don't uh, sleep much. So <laughs> it gives me the opportunity to either edit or be out shooting. And if it's a nice day, nice morning, uh, more, more often than not, I'll be outside taking pictures. In the film business, we call it the golden light. The, hour, the hours in the morning and the That's evening. Right. Do you and find the, that to be the, yep, the, the money hour, time? The golden hour is the perfect time to be out there. And that's when you get this type of photo. Well, that's a gorgeous photo. So what, in, in here, how often do you change the, the, the stuff on the walls in here? Well, we don't really change it unless it's been sold. So uh, we, like high, <laughs> we, like high, we like a high level of sales to do change off it. No, that's not quite true. Since I'm already always taking a, pictures, you know, I, I, I like to, I want to have the right variety. And every time I get new ones back, we take a look at what's on the wall. And is there something that might be a little different, maybe a little more interesting or uh, uh, new that we can hang up that might be. Uh, uh, so I guess customers. what I'm asking is if people were here once before, if they come back, they're going to see something new. Uh, uh, hopefully they definitely see something new. Uh, I kind of test that on the volunteers. I take them when they come in each week through and say, what's different? And usually people can spot them. All right. Uh, yeah. So what are the hours? The hours are Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 4, and by appointment. And I really encourage people to make an appointment. It's a good use of my time and a good use of their time. Okay. On Facebook, Vivid Gallery HHI, they can find you there. Yes, come in and correct. see what's going on. That's correct, Peter. Thank you. All right. So this wasn't your typical Thursday three, but this gave us a little insight to how this all works. And uh, these are really, really impressive work, um, Jeff. Really thank, impressed. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. All right. Third time.